and that they are beginning a withdrawal and then it must be over completely in seven days. If the Iraqis were to begin a withdrawal today, even without comment, even without an uh, authoritative announcement that the U.S. wants, uh, some officials are speculating that even if it took them longer than the seven days the U.S. wants, the U.S. could not go ahead with the ground war. There are still ways the Iraqis can stop this if they want to, but they have to do something other than the kind of scorched earth policy that Sam was describing. Okay, let me just ask you a couple quick questions, John, before we go on at, at length about this. Uh, does the Bush administration now think that the Soviets are making a major contribution, they're working on the same side, or that the Soviets are playing for their own goals now? Oh, I think the feeling at the very highest levels of the U.S. government is that the Soviets are making a good faith effort, uh, and the United States does not regard it as being an impediment. Uh, they know that the Soviets do have a slightly different agenda, but there has been uh, no feeling that they are intriguing here for their own benefit. Okay, let's uh, go with units to move forward. Do they try a full frontal assault, or do they just try to test the Iraqi defenses, hoping they're going to get a lot of surrender? They've been testing them for the last week or so, and, and from what I hear, they're pretty certain that if the Iraqis see an M1 tank or any, any Allied tank, they'll surrender. All right, front number three, from the sea, Marine forces here, amphibious forces. Exactly, and the la one Marine division out there, in the last 24 hours, they've taken an island off, the, uh, off Kuwait City. Uh, that is a normal preliminary for an amphibious assault. Remember, the uh, amphibious assault will not necessarily come across the beach. Uh, the Marines have several helicopter carriers that would come across the beach on helicopters. All right, and there are also Marine units down here which could come to the assistance exactly. of this Exactly, and they've been land. practicing for the past couple of months, breaching the Iraqi fortifications. There's a heavy, there's a super highway going going up the coast, the Marines on land will go up the coast, meeting the ones that came across the beach. All right, these are the possible tactical moves. Is it all necessary, given the weakened state of the Iraqi defense forces right now inside Kuwait, the battering that they have taken? This would be the, uh, the, op the, you know, the necessary uh, culmination of what we've done to the Iraqis so far. If you hit them hard enough, fast enough, on an enough front, uh, you could conceivably see the collapse of almost the entire Iraq army. But if you want to, and we do want to minimize American and allied casualties, would that affect the tactics that General Schwarzkopf will put into play right now? Well, in terms well, of perhaps not launching a marine amphibious operation, which may be the most risky one. Well, the, the operations down here, the amphibious operation and these operations down here would be much slower than what's going on over here. We would want to confirm that indeed most of the Iraqis that we haven't encountered yet would surrender. Some of them would resist. You will take casualties along this front. The amphibious operation is another story. The Marines have a lot more uh, initiative and mobility up there and they could simply avoid the Iraqis which is primarily what the Marines would want to do initially any kind of a time frame a timetable that you could put on this kind of an operation assuming that it starts tonight if they started down here tonight you would see a lot of Iraqi prisoners and some firefights you know in the next 24 hours this one you wouldn't hear of for a day or so there'll be an information blackout on that sure unless there's somebody from NBC out there with a radio okay we'll see if one is out there James Dunnigan thank uh, his son is here and you're here um, you told me earlier you you are ready and you hope that Iraq doesn't pull out. Why is that? Because I don't want my husband over there six months from now again and it would just be better to go ahead and get him out now than let, wait. That makes sense. All right, Deanna, thank you. That's all we have time for here at the moment. We're going to come back and talk to some more wives later. For now, I'm Jeff Flock, CNN reporting live from Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're going live right now to Richard Roth, standing by in Tel Aviv. Richard. Yes, uh, Dave, sirens are going off right now. It just began just about a minute ago, and we believe sirens are going off here in Tel Aviv and, and in other cities. And we're being told by Israeli radio that it is due to a missile attack. We have no information yet uh, what kind of attack or the number of missiles. If it indeed is a missile attack, it would be the 16th time Iraq has struck at Israel. Uh, many people uh, in the Jewish state who do have uh, cable access were watching the live pictures of the uh, attack in Baghdad when the sirens have gone off now. People uh, in Israel are advised to go to sealed rooms and to put on their gas mask. All the attacks so far, of course, have been conventional. And they also have been, uh, the authorities have been able to get better advance notice if there is a launch. So the sirens go off and then there's a couple of minutes usually before we find out what happens. Richard Roth, CNN, reporting live be uh, two, three miles deep. Bob. Some of them also are concrete enforced, sandbag uh, emplacements, sandbags, uh, like little moles living in there. So Dan, that's how it will... Secret uh, uh, spy satellite. This is a simple unclassified weather satellite photo of Kuwait. 
and it really was, it was like looking into your fireplace when it's uh, filled with glowing embers, uh, just bright spots, which were obviously these oil well fires all over the country. Uh, uh, this was at a time when the official figure was about 150, and uh, uh, I didn't count them, but uh, uh, to me, 150 looked like a conservative effort, e estimate of the number of fires that were burning in Kuwait at that time. But David, one thing this all this smoke does, it gives Saddam Hussein's forces some cover in addition to everything else, doesn't it? They can move, and it makes it very difficult to tell exactly what they're doing in, in many places in Kuwait. Well, yeah, on a limited scale, but it, when you're talking about the kind of uh, strategic advantage that the U.S. now has, uh, this is a very limited cover indeed, and it, it may uh, save the life of an individual Iraqi soldier who is not spotted by an aircraft but in terms of saving the Iraqi army, I, I think it's going to have very little effect. Watching with great interest all these developments are military families. David Dow is with some of those families at Camp Pendleton, California, deploying his troops from Kuwait and publicly announced that he was doing that. No movement can be discerned by Iraqi forces in Kuwait. There's no movement of them that anybody we've been able to contact can see at all. Saddam Hussein keeps silent. Last thing he said was uh, that the angels were on the shoulders of his troops. Saddam Hussein, from all apparent uh, signs, is intent on continuing the fighting to make the United States and the Allied forces come and get him. And the U.S. command accuses the Iraqis of systematic executions of Kuwaiti civilians, particularly those who might be witnesses to atrocities. It is the decisive hour in the Persian Gulf War. It may well be at hand, the razor cut as to whether we're going to have peace or a large ground war offensive. As the noon hour passed in Washington, exactly noon right now, 8 p.m., as you can see in the darkness here in Saudi Arabia. And as noon passed in the United States, so apparently did the last hope of averting a ground campaign for the liberation of Kuwait. As U.S. and other Allied warplanes blasted Baghdad yet again, Saddam Hussein was reported meeting with his war council, but Saddam has made no public response to President Bush's ultimatum. All along the war front, on both sides of the border, U.S. and other Allied armored vehicles have set to the task of breaking through the earthen barriers that brim, that General Chris mentioned, the, that, the brim that bars their way to the Iraqi army, which has fallen back from uh, right up against the border. To the north, inside Kuwait, a vision of hell. The U.S. command says nearly 200 Kuwaiti oil wells and other oil installations are burning, most of them torched, according to the Allied command, and in occupied Kuwait City, what one U.S. briefer describes as terrorism at its finest hour. That's a quote. There seems to be a systematic campaign of execution, particularly people that they may have uh, tortured previously, that they're uh, sort of destroying the evidence, I guess, for lack of a better term. Bob Ford is at the U.M. with a late development, Bob. And we now believe, or we are led to believe, by three different people who have left the Security Council meeting and have come out and talked to reporters that at some point in the last several hours, Tariq Aziz responded favorably to the American proposals. We should stress we do not know the context of the remarks. We do not have the exact language. But both a Russian, a Canadian, and one other diplomat have said that, as they understand it, there was a favorable response in Moscow by Tariq Aziz. Now, hearing this in the Security Council, the American ambassador, Mr. Pickering, asked for clarification. And there, at this point, is where the matter stands. Perhaps a breakthrough, perhaps nothing. But at least it has caused a flurry of activity here at the United Nations. Dan? Thanks, Bob. And uh, Ambassador Pickering, for those who don't know him, one of the most experienced of you. Under the White House deadline, the skies over Baghdad lit up with live pictures. These pictures are live out of Baghdad right now as the Allied forces continue an attack on the capital of Iraq, Baghdad. A lot of secondary explosions from military targets obviously being hit. The anti-aircraft fire was very prevalent just minutes ago, so we'll continue to monitor these live pictures out of Baghdad during this attack. We now go to White House. Uh, correspondent Frank Cessna is standing by in Washington. Frank.
Dave, the White House has decided to let the noon deadline pass without comment. White House spokesman Marlon Fitzwater saying only that, quote, we are monitoring the situation, we have nothing to report. Here at the White House, National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft is in his office. President Bush is at Camp David along with Secretary of State James Baker. They are monitoring the situation very carefully at Camp David as well. All morning long, however, senior administration officials have been telling us that they did not expect very much at the United Nations. They have been saying they did not expect Iraq to accept the terms of the U.S. ultimatum. There is, of course, no specific response to what we heard from Charles Feldman just a few moments ago. Uh, and although we are told that perhaps later in the afternoon, spokesman Fitzwater will have something to say. President Bush yesterday, in laying out the ultimatum, said there were two things that he wanted to see if, in fact, this withdrawal by Iraq was going to take place and be substantiated. One was a clear comment, a clear commitment to do it uh, from Iraq, from the senior most levels there, communicated to the United Nations, and two was physical evidence of a withdrawal taking place from Kuwait. According to Pentagon and White House uh, officials, with whom CNN has been in touch throughout the morning, there has been no indication of any imminent, actual, or planned Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait. So at least one of the president's conditions appears not to have been met. That being said, a number of officials say that for political reasons that are quite understandable, the United States will have to watch this situation very carefully, though the deadline was etched in stone rhetorically, it certainly was not in, as a matter of fact. And at least one senior official said here this morning that he expected a fair amount of time would elapse before this campaign entered its next and potentially costliest phase, the ground campaign. Frank says no CNN reporting live back to Baghdad that uh, the Iraqis had uh, accepted the conditions put forward by uh, President Bush. But we're seeking clarification of that at the United Nations. Uh, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Ambassador Pickering, uh, said that he would be seeking clarification. There was this special meeting at the U.N. today, which was requested by the Soviets. Fuad Ajami, who is an expert on the Powell and Powell to Schwarzkopf, and that, that will begin the process of this uh, this campaign. Tom? Uh, Fred, briefly, you said the president at Camp David uh, suggests that you expect it to come this weekend. Yes, I do, Tom. Uh, there are several reasons for that. We have just been told by a senior administration official, Tom, that there's a greater urgency now to begin this, and not a political urgency, but a humanitarian urgency. We, we heard earlier today that General Neil in Riyadh started told of uh, systematic execution has responded in a positive manner to the U.S. statement. The word again being statement, the word that presumably Ambassador Pickering is trying to have clarified. We know no more about this. We don't know uh, if they're referring to the uh, ultimatum, the uh, president's ultimatum, President Bush's ultimatum of noon, or if there's some other American statement that we do not know about as what they are hearing is the following. And let me again be very careful in what I say here. We are hearing from three different missions to the UN that now with the deadline having passed, that the Soviet Union has, we are told, informed the Security Council, the 15-member Security Council, that Iraq's foreign minister has responded in a positive manner to the U.S. statement. Now, I emphasize the word statement because apparently the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Pickering, has asked, we are told, for clarification because there is some confusion, and understandably so, about whether uh, they are responding to President Bush's ultimatum that they begin the pullout from Kuwait at noon, which of course has now passed in the uh, Eastern uh, time, or to some other U.S. statement. So again, let me recap what we are hearing. We are hearing from three different missions to the United Nations here that as the Security Council is meeting, the 15-member Security Council, the Soviet Union, we are told, is telling the Security Council that the Iraqi foreign minister has responded in a positive manner to an American statement of some sort. Whether it is the ultimatum that they begin the pullout at noon, we do not know. Clarification is apparently being asked for. We will pass on any information, of course, as soon as we learn it. Charles Feldman, CNN, reporting live from the United Nations. Thank you, Charles. Minutes ago, air raid sirens were sounding. But ground war could strain that new alliance. This was Army Day here, and 100,000 people gathered outside the Kremlin to honor Soviet military achievements. Conservatives in the Army and elsewhere have been uneasy with...